Here are today's top stories. The first day of classes ran smoothly as over 27 million students flocked to schools. President Duterte vows to deepen ties with South Korea on his first visit to the country. Fishing is temporarily banned in the Davao Gulf to allow the repopulation of pelagic fish. And basketball stars Jaron Tang and Norbert and Thomas Torres are injured in a stabbing incident in Taguig. Good day. I'm William Theo. Welcome to the PNA Newsroom. Over 27 million students troop back to public and private schools for the first day of classes of school year 2018 to 2019. The Department of Education says it's all systems go as they are ready to accommodate the millions of students coming to school today. DepEd says the needed classrooms, teachers, chairs, toilets, electricity, and running water in schools are all accounted for. However, a shortage of teachers is likely to happen due to the influx of students. For his part, ACT Teachers Party List Representative Antonio Tino claims there is a shortage in Metro Manila alone of 18,000 classrooms. PNP Chief Oscar Albayal de said the opening of classes has been peaceful with no untoward incidents being reported. Police assistance desks and other security personnel have been deployed near schools. Albayal de says police will continue monitoring schools until their activities normalize. Meanwhile, Dep Ed Secretary Leonor Briones advised students to do well on their first day and learn beyond what their teachers and computers teach them. President Rodrigo Duterte is in South Korea for a state visit, where he aims to improve bilateral ties between the two countries. More on this from Benj Bondo. President Rodrigo Duterte and his cabinet members were welcomed by nearly 2,000 flag-carrying and cheering Filipinos as he arrived Sunday morning at the Incheon Airport. Duterte is on a three-day visit to Seoul to further strengthen Philippine-South Korean bilateral ties, especially on trade, investments, defense, and security. The president first met with the Filipino community, which he thanked for their sacrifices for the sake of the country and their families. He also thanked the South Korean government for treating well the more than 66,000 Filipinos living and working in the East Asian nation. Earlier today, Duterte laid a wreath at the Seoul National Cemetery to honor the fallen soldiers, leaders, and heroes of South Korea. The highlight of Duterte's visit is a bilateral meeting with South Korean President Moon Jae-in at the Blue House. The two leaders also witnessed the signing of major agreements on transportation, science and technology, trade and economic cooperation, and the loan agreement on the new Cebu International Container Port project. Another highlight is Duterte's meeting with Korean business leaders set on June 5, where he hopes to encourage more investors to open up business in the country. President Duterte also announced that the government is considering the purchase of Bell helicopters from South Korea to boost the capability of the armed forces of the Philippines. South Korea is one of the top trading partners of the Philippines, as well as one of the top tourism visitors of the country. For the PNA Newsroom, I'm Ben Bondo. The Land Transportation Franchising and Regulatory Board reminds public utility vehicle drivers to grant students a 20% fair discount when classes start on Monday. LTFRB board member Eileen Lozada said students are entitled to discounts even during weekends and holidays. The LTFRB has released Memorandum Circular Number 2017-004 last October, allowing students to avail of fair discounts including weekends and holidays. Postgraduate students still need to pay in full, such as students studying medicine, law, as well as those taking their master's degree or doctorate studies. The PNP leadership is now subject to an ongoing reshuffle with 29 top leaders being reassigned and more ranking officials set to get new jobs. Calabarzon Police Chief Guillermo Eliazar was named as the new chief of the National Capital Region Police Office. 
NCRPO Chief Pancanchos Cascolan took over the Civic Securities Group while Director Federico Dulay Jr. was transferred to the office of the Chief PNP. PNP Chief Oscar Albayalde says next to be reshuffled are provincial and city directors based on the evaluation of the PNP Oversight Committee. Albayalde says all officials will be evaluated before they are reassigned or retained in their current positions. Even the newly appointed officials are given one month to prove that they are worthy of their new post. He stresses that reshuffling is a command decision and not solely that of the PNP chief. The Judicial and Bar Council has opened a post in the Court of Appeals and 42 vacancies for judges in Metro Manila. The vacancy at the Appellate Court covers the post left by Associate Justice Socorro Inting, who was appointed last May 3 as the head of the Commission on Elections. Inting filled the vacancy left by Kamala Commissioner Arthur Lim, who retired last February. Interested applicants have until July 10 to submit their applications. In the same announcement, the JBC said it is also accepting applications for vacant posts as judges in the National Capital Judicial Region. Interested applicants were also given until July 10 to submit their applications. Meanwhile, the JBC is set to conduct a public panel interview for the aspirants for the position of SC Associate Justice Presbyterio Velasco Jr., who is set to retire on August 8. Twelve candidates are being considered to replace Velasco. Still to come, fishing is temporarily banned in the Davao Gulf to allow the repopulation of pelagic fish. The military decries accusations of killing natives in Mindanao. These and more when the PNA Newsroom continues. May 24, Huwebes, Davao City. Pinangunaan ni Pangulong Rodrigo Roa Duterte ang inaugurasyon ng Davao River Bridge Widening Project na inaasang makababawa sa bigat ng trapiko sa syudad. Sunod ay dinalaw at pinarangalan ng Pangulo ang pitong sundalong nasugatan sa pagsabog ng isang improvised explosive device sa Compostela Valley. May 28, Lunes, Malacanang. Tinanggap ni Pangulong Duterte ang mga kredensyal ng bagong Indonesian Ambassador na si Sinyo Hari Sarundahang. Nag-courtesy call din sa Pangulo ang Korean Ambassador to the Philippines at nag-farewell call naman ang Ambassador ng Lao People's Democratic Republic na pinarangalan ng Order of Sikatuna na may ranggong dato. Nagkaroon naman ng pagkakataon na makipag-picture taking sa Pangulo ang mga manlalaro ng San Miguel Ala Pilipinas na nagkampiyon sa katatapos lang na ASEAN Basketball League na ganap sa Thailand. May 29, Martes, Pasay City. Nagbigay inspirasyon ng Pangulo at binati ang mga nagsipagtapos na mag-aaral ng San Beda University. As San Beda community, let us work together in forging a stronger citizenry who proactively respond to the call of the service of our country and people. May 30, Miyerkules, Port Area, Manila. Sinaksihan ng Chief Executive ang pagwasak sa mga smuggled luxury cars at motorcycles na nakumpiska ng Bureau of Customs. Sa kanyang talumpati ay inanunso niya ang pagsibak sa isang Customs Deputy Commissioner na nadadawit sa katiwalian. He is now under investigation by the House. Tagal yung investigation sa House, pati recommendation lang yan. So I will cut short the agony of Congress. I'm firing him today. Noel Patrick Sales Prudente. I think he's a, an assistant commissioner. Or a deputy commissioner. So I'll make it easy for Congress. I'm firing him today. Diretsahan tayo. Wag, wag not during my watch. Wag mong gawain sa panahon. Malacanang Park, Manila. Pinangunahan ni Pangulong Duterte ang change of command ceremony ng Presidential Security Group. 
pinasalamatan niya ang naging mahusay na serbisyo ni outgoing PSG Commander Brigadier General Lope Dagoy na pinalitan ni Colonel Jose Ariel Niembra. Ako po si Secretary Martin Antanar at ito ang Duterte on Duty. Abangan sa susunod na linggo ang mga gagawin ng Pangulo. Former President Benigno Aquino III, former Health Secretary Janet Garin, and former Budget Chief Lorenzo Abad appeared Monday at the Department of Justice to answer the criminal complaints against them over the Dengvaksha mess. The three are facing charges of multiple homicide and physical injuries through criminal negligence, graft, technical malversation, and violation of the procurement law. Also present were some of the other respondents, including former and incumbent officials of the DOH, officers and executives of Dingvaxa manufacturer Sanofi Pasteur and local distributor Zua Lake Pharma. Aquino, Abad and Garin also faced blunder charges at the Office of the Ombudsman in connection with their administration's nationwide anti-dengue vaccination project. Officials of the Aquino administration faced numerous cases after Sanofi Pasteur announced last year that the vaccine may cause severe dengue upon those who have not acquired the disease prior to immunization. For the PNA Newsroom, I'm Rom Dulfo. Inequality and progress among regions is seen to narrow down as the Duterte administration drums up its Build, Build, Build infrastructure program. More on this from Miguel Hill. The Department of Finance says the Duterte administration's ambitious infrastructure program dubbed the Build, Build, Build program will contribute greatly to narrowing inequality among regions. In its Economic Bulletin on Gross Regional Domestic Product released Friday, the department showed that inequality was slightly tempered in 2017. For instance, GRDP in the National Capital Region slowed down to 36 0.44% in 2017 from 36.63% in 2016, while Region 4A decelerated its growth to 18.34% from 18.35%. Increments in the GRDP were registered in non-traditional growth areas such as the Cordillera Administrative Region, Cagayan Valley, and Soxargen from 2.62% to 2.66%. The DOF says mobilizing revenues to increase fiscal space for the Build, Build, Build program is the best strategy to boost regional incomes. As more roads and ports are built in lower income regions, investments in productive enterprises will follow, thus generating more jobs and raising incomes. This will enhance each region's economic potentials and move the less developed regions closer to the income level of more developed regions. For the PNA Newsroom, I am Miguel Hill. Fishing will be prohibited in the Davao Gulf as the Bureau of Fisheries and Aquatic Resources, or BFAR, implements the closed season in the area. BFAR says the closed season, which started Friday, June 1st, will give way for pelagic fish to grow and repopulate the Gulf. Pelagic fish caught in the Davao Gulf include the Carabalias, Galunggong, and Matangbaka. Dr. Elaine Vera Belvis, veterinarian and chief of the Fishery Protection Group personnel, says fishing with ring nets or bag nets with small holes will be prohibited to prevent fingerlings from being caught. Belvis says that the closed season will assure fisher folk of bigger catches in the future. The PNP Regional Maritime Unit, Philippine Coast Guard, and the LGU Fishery Law Enforcers will help enforce the BFAR order. Violators will face appropriate charges and fines. Three more members of the New People's Army in Sok Sargen have surrendered to the military over the weekend. Captain Jerry Lamosa, of the Army's 10th Infantry Division spokesperson, says the three rebels abandoned the communist group and brought with them their firearms. On Saturday, Goyo Lagal Pandatu and Toto Lumbay 
gave themselves up to government troops in Barangay Upper Sepaka, Surala, South Cotabato. Last Friday, the military received Boy Cabisa Diale in Sarangani Province. The three told the military that they left the NPA because they were tired of being on the run. 333 members of the NPA, including thousands of its supporters and affiliates, have surrendered from January to May 31st. The military is dismayed by accusations of killing native residents in the mountains of Mindanao. Eastern Mindanao Command spokesperson Major Ezra Balagte says the accusations persist because of lack of evidence implicating government troops to the killings. He says the accusations of militant groups have already gone as far as reaching the United Nations. Balagte challenged militant groups to file formal charges or show evidence against them to prove the alleged atrocities against the natives. He says the accusations have done nothing but damage the country's image. Two suspected drug personalities were killed while three others were arrested in separate anti-illegal drugs operations in Nueva Ecija. Suspects Crisanto Bondoc from Cabanatuan City and Federico Pineda from Barangay Bangad succumbed to gunshot wounds after they allegedly engaged in a firefight with policemen during separate by-bust operations. Investigators of the Cabanatuan City Police recovered a coin purse with nine sachets of shabu, two mobile phones, a handgun and spent shell casings and the 500 pesos marked money. Peñaranda police recovered from Pineda three plastic sachets containing shabu, 11 plastic sachets of marijuana tops, a revolver and other drug paraphernalia, by bust money, a mobile phone, and a motorcycle without license plates. Meanwhile, Jerry Galdones, Noel Eustachio, and Emerson Grino each yielded sachets of shabu in police operations. Up next, Special Assistant to the President Bongo denies using government funds for meet-and-greet events outside the country. Basketball players Jeron Teng and Norbert and Thomas Torres are injured in a stabbing incident in Taguig. These and more when the PNA Newsroom returns. This is Second Valley Market and Banana, and you're watching. Bakit kailangan gawin ito? Yung makausap ng mga OFW. Para malaman po ng ating mga OFWs na hindi sila nakakalimutan ng ating gobyerno. Lalo na po ngayon sa panahon ni Pangulong Duterte, ngayon lamang naramdaman ng mga OFWs na sila ay importante at tunay na pinangangalagaan ng ating gobyerno. At vice versa, naralaman din ng gobyerno ang hinaing ng ating mga OFWs. Ano ang uh, ano yung common denominator na napansin mo tuwing bumibisita ka sa mga OFWs? Dahil malapit ka sa kanila. Una-una po, gusto nilang iparating kay Pangulong Duterte na marami ang nagmamahal mahal at sumusuporta sa kanya. At ang sinasabi ng mga OFWs, huwag mawalan ng loob si Pangulong Duterte dahil mas marami ang nagmamahal at sumusuporta sa kanya. Usually, kumukonti yung mga fans sa isang presidente, kumihina yung energy. Pero anong napansin mo sa administrasyon ng Duterte as far as OFWs at saka yung reception is concerned? Ang mga OFWs po natin sabik sa pagbabago, sabik sa good news at karanas, kadalasan po natatabunan niya ng mga negatibong balita. Kaya po, mga OFWs po natin sa pamamagitan ng social media ay patuloy nilang inihahayag ang support nila kay Pangulo Duterte at palakas ng palakas ito habang dumadaan ng panahon. Special Assistant to the President Christopher Lawrence Bongo clarifies that his meet-and-greet events with overseas Filipino workers are not funded by the government. The top presidential aide explains that his main purpose in attending such events 
is to campaign for President Rodrigo Duterte's peace and order advocacies. Go says his Filipino friends abroad who invite him and organize these events. He added that he and the president understand the sadness OFWs feel as they toil in another country to give a bright future for their families. Go also reiterated that his main goal is to serve Duterte and the country and not to drum up his preparations for his own political career. He encouraged his bashers to join him in helping Filipinos nationwide instead of accusing him of campaigning early for the 2019 senatorial race. Communications Secretary Martin Andanar, Assistant Secretary Moka Uson, and actors Ryan Bang, Robin Padilla, and Philip Salvador joined Go in a meet and greet event with OFWs at Vips Restaurant in South Korea. The Philippine Charity Sweepstakes Office reports it has extended 643 million pesos worth of medical assistance in April. PCSO General Manager Alexander Balutan says they have served over 33,000 patients with the amount. This means a 25% increase in spending and 26% more beneficiaries compared to April last year. The top three requests from beneficiaries were confinement requests for medicines and chemotherapy. To avoid processing delays, he advised patients to submit complete documentary requirements. A patient who is discharged from the hospital and has a remaining balance is required to submit a notarized promissory note. Additional documents will be required for other medical needs. Balutan encourages more Filipinos to patronize their products such as lotto and sweepstakes. Under the PCSO charter, 55% of its revenues should be allocated for prizes, 15% for operational expenses, and 30% for its charity fund. Former LaSalle players Jeron Teng, Norbert, and Thomas Torres were injured following a commotion outside a bar at the Bonifacio Global City in Taguig early Sunday. Based on a police report, Teng and the two Torreses were walking just outside the early night club in the Fort Strip when three men confronted them, leading to the suspect stabbing the basketball players. The three ballers were rushed to St. Luke's Medical Center to get treatment. The suspects, identified as Edmar Manalo, Joseph Barona, and Willard Basili, were arrested and are set to be charged with frustrated homicide and less serious physical injuries. For our featured story, communities in Marawi City are being rebuilt anew as the United Nations leads efforts to build additional homes for the displaced residents. More on this from Calvin Penaco. In partnership with the Marawi government, Social Housing Finance Corporation, and the Government of Japan, the United Nations Human Settlements Program, or UN Habitat, will build 1,500 core shelters for internally displaced persons in support of the rehabilitation process of Marawi City. The concerned parties signed the Memorandum of Understanding for the said project at the Bagumbayan Hall. Marawi City Mayor Mahul Gandamra highlighted the importance of the project during his speech at the signing ceremony. He said that while they are pleased with the temporal shelters, their people still need more permanent dwellings for they have lost everything in the siege. Task Force Bangon Marawi Chairperson Secretary Eduardo del Rosario announced that the floor area of each house will have a minimum of 36 square meters instead of the usual 25 square meters and explained that a bigger floor area is necessary for the average family size in Marawi City, which is 6 to 14 members. He added that the housing project aims to build a community similar to a subdivision, including a school for the education of the children. Pagagawa na rin tayo ng ispelahan kung saan gagawin yung mga subdivisions para hindi na magtatrabe ng ating mga anak sa malayong ispelahan. Right? UN Habitat Country Program Manager Christopher E. Rollio explained the project's community-driven approach called the People's Process, which will require the leadership of the community with support from local and national government. The People's Process involves strong community and stakeholders participation as family partners will be involved in and take part in deciding where they will return and stay, what house they will live in, 
what facilities they will prioritize, how they will take the lead in project management, in procurement, in financial management, in quality control, and project monitoring. Beyond providing core shelters, the project also aims to address livelihood needs by providing livelihood trainings for households. Meanwhile, the Japanese government's involvement comes in the form of 1.1 billion Japanese yen or 500 million pesos, which Rolio said will go directly to the people through the community-driven approach. For PNA Newsroom, Calvin Pinaco, Philippine Information Agency. Let's now check out the weather forecast for Metro Manila and the rest of the country. Here's another look at today's top stories. The first day of classes ran smoothly as over 27 million students flocked to schools. President Duterte vows to deepen ties with South Korea on his first visit to the country. Fishing is temporarily banned in the Dabao Gulf to allow the repopulation of pelagic fish. And basketball stars Jeron Teng and Norbert and Thomas Torres are injured in a stabbing incident in Taguig. Thank you for watching another edition of the PNA Newsroom. To check out these and other stories, visit the PNA website or follow the Philippine News Agency on Facebook and Twitter. For more stories about the government and how it serves the Filipinos, look for these hashtags in all of our social media platforms and websites. It's a Monday. Don't be in a rush for the week to get over quickly. Remember, long journeys begin with just a single step. And that's your daily dose of the latest news and information that you need to know. From the PNA Newsroom, I'm William Theo. Good day.